It's a short 30 day session and the budget has priority, but there are already more than 200 bills and memorials pre filed ahead of this session at the time of our taping. And there will also be many constitutional amendments as lawmakers try to get around the requirement that any non budget items must be prioritized by Governor Susana Martinez. Big topics will include lottery scholarship, Navajo gaming compacts, the economic development scene, and raises for state employees. And MIF correspondent Gwyneth Dolan talks with state senators Tim Keller and Sue Wilson Beffert to give their thoughts on what may happen. Senator Sue Wilson Beffert and Majority Whip Tim Keller, thank you both for being with us here today. Thank We've you. just talked about some education uh, issues in our previous segment. Now let's talk about some of the things that are in the rest of the budget. The 30-day session is designed to be all about the budget and the Legislative Finance Committee, which you sit on, Senator Beffert, uh, is uh, puts together a proposed budget and the governor has one of her own and then the you have 30 days to fight about it. <laughs> That's how that works. So this, you know, they're not too far apart this year in, in some ways. The numbers aren't too far apart, um, but you're all under a lot of pressure to do something about jobs and economic development. So I think we're gonna be looking at a lot of proposals that try to bring more money into the state and put no, more New Mexicans in jobs. Uh, Senator Beffert, you've got a, a couple of proposals. One of them came out of some research done by a Santa Fe based think tank called Think New Mexico and uh, it would try to lure new businesses to the state uh, and encourage companies to hire more people but there's a, a different twist with the incentives. Tell me about it. Yes, I'm very excited about that bill which I will be co-sponsoring with Senator Mary Kay Papin. So it's, it starts off being a bipartisan bill and it's just a different way to skin the cat, so to speak, because the other types of tax incentives that we've been uh, using in the past offer them up front. And yet what we have been somewhat concerned about some of the jobs that have come in and that sort of thing is that we offer the incentives and then we have a very precarious situation in terms of if the companies leave or uh, don't materialize with as many jobs. So what this one will do is uh, the company can choose to take uh, whatever uh, tax bill or tax law that they uh, are interested in, or they could choose to come in and stay in the state for three years and then have their choice of what tax um, they want to have a benefit on. And Part so, of this is like a Jerry Maguire plan, like show me the jobs. <laughs> show us the jobs you've done, now we'll give you some money, right? I, I think it's a very exciting and innovative uh, look at the way that we might be able to uh, really lure companies and keep them. And you've got some bipartisan support already? We do. You feel good about we it? We do. What I like about the Think New Mexico is it is a bipartisan board of very prominent uh, leaders that have a wealth of experience and they come together and put their collective thoughts to, uh, together. They do a lot of research. Uh, Fred Nathan um, you know, spends uh, his career uh, finding out best practices and trying to apply them to New Mexico. Senator Keller, you're famous for peppering the legislature with your proposals. You've got uh, more than a dozen, I think, so far. Uh, you've got one that would give a $5,000 tax credit to companies that hire New Mexico graduates in the STEM fields. And another would move some Bureau of Land Management property to the state land office, am I right? So that we can hopefully make some money off of that. How would that work? Well, the first bill is really designed to reverse the brain drain, and the idea actually came from UNM students. Uh, they were looking at different ways. They're geniuses, <laughs> all of them geniuses. <laughs> they certainly are in this bill. Yeah. So I hope they stay in New Mexico, and that's what the bill is designed to do. So it, all, it also gives the, the company the funding, the tax benefit, so that it is literally tied to job creation. In other words, it doesn't go to the individual. And the way it's also set up is that you know it's targeted towards areas where we have the highest brain drain. And we've seen studies that show at the PhD level in science and technology, almost 90% of our graduates leave the state and don't come back. That's an investment we've made in them, but they're typically leaving for higher salaries. So this jobs credit actually enables companies to offer a higher salary. Uh, so hopefully it'll make a difference and hopefully we can get it through this year. Uh, the second proposal is interesting. It's actually Michael Sanchez, our majority leader, is running with this one. And it's really the first step is just to study it. But the idea is that if we have more land under the state control, the state gets more money from it. Uh, and so there's some federal lands that we might be able to do this with. 
Uh, however, there are some concerns which I'm taking very seriously and we're looking at about what happens, what kind of controls are on the lands now that may not be there depending on who's the land commissioner and that kind of thing. So I think that, that idea, we're going to have to bake it up a little bit more. And because if we make money on that land, it means we have to either lease it for grazing or uh, oil and gas production or something like that, right? Well, it could also be wind farms. Uh, it could also be solar farms. It can also be business parks. Uh, so there's different options. But I, I think what we've learned by even just talking about this issue is that we've got to get more detailed. And that's why Senator Sanchez's bill is designed to investigate and map out how this would work. Senator Breffert, let's go back to one of those proposals from Think, Think New Mexico. Some of, some of the other elements in that uh, jobs bill uh, would close some tax loopholes, and uh, including tax breaks for cigarette distributors, professional fighting, uh, ATV and RV sales, and web hosting. Think New Mexico says that closing these loopholes could bring in $10 million in revenue. But we've all seen this happen before. Somebody comes with a really good idea that everybody likes and industry hates it. Are you expecting a fight over closing these loopholes? Well, interesting that you asked because I've already had my first set of calls. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, a bill starts off uh, in its original state. It was not uh, brought through the committee process, so it was kind of a surprise to people and yet it's a well-respected group that brought it about and it's an attempt to make it revenue neutral and so some of the things that uh, you know I knew nothing about sports fighting or anything uh, of that nature so it'll be very interesting to see who comes out of the woodwork and yet uh, I think that it's a very enticing concept in terms of um, seeing how we can come together and bring a bill about that might really be uh, a beautiful new uh, piece of economic development. I haven't seen a bill <laughs> described as beautiful in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got another proposal for rural economic development. What do you want to do? Well, as we have seen, uh, the rural parts of New, Me New Mexico have been losing population. In fact, I represent the East Mountains, and unfortunately, they may be closing one or even two schools. And so if you do not have jobs in, in the uh, small and uh, frontier areas, people have to go to work, and they many times find that it's too much of a stretch to uh, commute and that sort of thing. And so uh, it's a very exciting new uh, concept that will be amending a pre-existing bill that uh, I authored many years ago, which was software development. If you locate outside uh, of a metropolis area that would encourage people to um, locate or set up businesses in these smaller areas, that they would not be subjected to the gross receipts tax. And that's because we have a very complicated tax system in New Mexico, uh, a tax on services. So what this bill is going to do, and Representative Heaton uh, sponsored the final version of the original tax bill about 10 years ago, but it's virtually not been used, um, is to now that we are really into the computer age and many, many, uh, everyone has uh, knowledge for the most part of computers, is to expand it to computer applications uh, so that uh, there would be a wide variety of usages. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, Senator Keller, you have tried to push a tax expenditure budget for how many times now? It's been passed twice, hasn't it? Three, three times. Three times. Uh, third time was not a charm. Three vetoes uh, right. and three passages. Yeah. Now, the governor supports the idea of a tax expenditure budget, she says. Um, she didn't like yours. But uh, you're going to try again this session with a constitutional amendment, is that right? Yeah, I think what's happened over the course of the legislature, this first passed it under Governor Richardson, and a Republican carried it. It was passed unanimously, bipartisanly, it was vetoed. Uh, I passed it again, same situation, same result. Now, it uh, sounds confusing and boring, but really this is supposed to be something that, one document where you can see every tax credit, every uh, little you know tax break or incentive that we give all in one place so you can, you know, kind of see, I like this one, not this one, I like this one, not this one. So this is the challenge with the ideas that Senator Beffert ran through and even uh, Think New Mexico's proposal is that our state right now has 400 plus of these types of programs. And we actually don't even know how much they cost our taxpayers. 
The uh, estimates that have been done in the past show that it's roughly a billion dollars. That's roughly 20% of our budget. So our tax code is a giant piece of Swiss cheese, and the holes uh, account for about 20% of that piece of Swiss cheese. And 20 other three, 23 other states do this. Uh, without this, it's difficult for us to have any kind of meaningful tax reform or economic development policy because we don't know the jobs associated, the return on investment, or any of that information. So since and you can't so, get the governor to sign it, we're going to send it to the voters. <laughs> Instead, and because a constitutional amendment doesn't need her signature. That's right. right. And, uh, and hopefully now, and, and this, some of this is a branch rivalry. It's like the executive branch versus legislative branch. And, and to me, that is exactly why we should send it to the voters and they decide. And that way we stop having kind of these petty power arguments that have gotten this bill vetoed. Now, you, Democrats hated the idea of sending same-sex marriage to the voters uh, because... Uh, you know, for various reasons. Why is this something that should subvert the governor and go to the voters? Well, this situation is very unique in that it's been, the legislature has tried to do this three times and the executive branch under two governors has said no. So I think here we have a track record of branch rivalry and that's where we need the public to chime in. But I think in general, even on same-sex marriage, uh, you know, th there's nothing wrong with, with talking about sending bills uh, to the voters for them to vote on. We are not a referendum state, so there should be no fears about this getting out of hand. And so I think uh, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't sort of stop the dialogue before something even passes. And, and so that's why I think these issues are important to talk about in the session. Speaking of constitutional amendments, we hopefully will have a little bit of excitement during this uh, Money Matters session with a constitutional amendment to legalize recreational marijuana use. Senator Beffert, what do you think? Well, uh, I think that uh, at this stage, uh, I personally and, and my constituents that have been uh, getting in contact with me would like to see how Colorado shakes out some of the unintended consequences, some of what they may have to go back and uh, worry about it in their state. Um, and as far as, as I can see, I, I think that people are concerned about we, we do not have um, driving while intoxicated uh, with something other than liquor and, and that sort of thing. Um, we I only have of course, about 30 seconds left. I hate to interrupt you, but Senator Keller, are you pro pot, anti pot? We could tax the heck out of it and probably make a lot of money. Well, we've got to look at it in the session, and I think it, we're going to have to also study what's happening in Colorado. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us, and I hope we uh, catch up with you during the session. Thank you. Thanks.